God bless and welcome to Texas Haunted Channel. If you're new here, please click that subscribe button. So what you saw at the beginning of the video is my good friend Michael running an eight second pass in his K-Swap EG. Uh, he's running Jack Spania's center feed manifold, so that just goes to show that that manifold really is good. Uh, information for Jack Spania products will be in the description as well as the Mac valve with a discount code. So we're gonna go ahead and get into it. I hope you guys enjoy this video. All right, so in today's video, we're going to be installing the three port Mac valve into the RSX. That way we can run boost by gear um, or turn the boost up just from the tune. This will make that possible. I went ahead and 3D printed out of a polycarbonate uh, filament so that way I have a little mounting bracket, which will probably end up mounting it right over here, um, maybe there, something like that. Or if I change the location, it'll be somewhere pretty easy to access. And it has the two wires, which we hook up to the ECU, so that way we can adjust all the settings for this Mac valve. Now they have four ports and three ports. I, I don't need anything more than a three port for this particular setup, so this will be perfectly fine. Um, but that way we can actually run a lower boost setting in first gear, second gear, and then turn it up in third and fourth, or just run uh, boost settings all the same level. We can ramp it in to where the wastegate, the wastegate stays shut as long as possible, and then last minute opens up. That way you get as much boost quickly as possible. It's uh, actually to make the boost build up quicker. So it's kind of like a, a quick spool, and uh, it's really nice. So we're gonna go ahead and install this, and I'm gonna show you how to do it. We've got quarter inch line, that runs on the side. Went to Home Depot and got that stuff. Pretty simple. Uh, two quarter inch lines and then a T piece. We'll tee off of it and I'll put a diagram on screen so you guys can see exactly what it looks like. But uh, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and get into it. I hope you enjoy this video. Okay, so this is the stuff we need to start out with. Obviously you need a Mac valve, which this will be linked in the description with a discount code if you guys want to pick one up. Um, and we have a quarter inch T piece, which we're gonna need. Plus I went ahead and got like four and a half feet of line here. Um, it's just quarter inch. I went ahead and got the braided stuff so it can handle pressure well and got some, you know, hose clamps and stuff like that. But, but we're going to go head over to the car and I'll show you exactly how to hook it up. All right. To start all this out, we're just going to go ahead and take this stuff off and out of the way. Just kind of free up more room while we're working. This is the setup we were running on the dyno just to get it to 14 pounds of boost. So we're going to go ahead and ditch this and go with the Mac valve. So definitely going to be a nicer option. As you can see, we just drilled a hole through and through on a little T-piece. We actually broke the T-piece off and drilled it through and then have this piece right there. So the Mac valve will definitely be a better option as opposed to this. All right, so on the Mac valve, it says two right here that will be running to the top part of the wastegate and we're going to also tee off that as well so i'm going to go ahead and get this line ran so we can see exactly how much line we need to cut all right so that's about where it needs to be for that so now that that's cut it will plug in right here on the number two and then the number one over here on this side that is going to run right over here to the bottom section of the wastegate. There's a nipple on the bottom and a nipple on the top. The top nipple runs to the number two, and then the number one runs to the bottom. And then we actually have to split it and then get the vacuum source from right here. That's what the T piece comes in for. And then we just tee it right in. And that's pretty much it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And I'm also gonna have a diagram right here on screen to show you exactly what I'm talking about. Um, if you need to just pause the screen or whatever, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and do that and we will see how it looks.
All right, now that we've got all the lines ran and I put hose clamps on the vacuum lines, it's all mounted. Um, the only thing we have left to do is run these two wires to the ECU. But Jack Spania's wire tuck harness already has auxiliary wires, so it's already ran over towards the ECU. I don't have to fish it through the firewall or anything. But if you don't have this harness, just run two wires through the firewall grommet. And it doesn't matter which way they're hooked up. So we're probably just going to do the white and the black wire and just hook them up uh, and then go into the inside, wire them into the ECU, and we'll go from there. Hope you guys are enjoying this video. All right, so we have the ECU right here. We've got this big plug on the right, and then the one right next to it, this littler plug, that is the B plug. We are going to turn it over like this. You can see the bottom row here. The second one, not this one, but this one right here, that is B21. Put a pin out right there on screen so you can see this is B21. But there's no connector there. Um, there's no pin. But Jack Spaney already thought of that. These are those auxiliary wires that we talked about in the engine bay. We're just going to go ahead and stick the black one in that second pin spot. And uh, that'll allow us to pin this. And there it is. It is officially pinned that simple on this Jack Spaney harness. This is the wire tuck harness I did a separate video on. Uh, but that is already connected, so there's nothing special that needs done there. Now we have to hook this white one up to a power wire. Okay, I went ahead and went under the hood and stripped that wire back and ran it to a protected fuse because I do need a 12 volt source and it's better to run it off of a fuse rather than the ECU. So I just ran it directly to the fuse box and now we're here at the computer. So now that we're at the computer, we got enable boost control on B21, which is that connector we ran. The ECU would be the ground side, and then the uh, fuse would be the positive. So if you're wondering how that works. But um, yeah, we just connect or click that button right there. Um, and then now we have all of these settings, which this is above my pay grade right here. This is where Michael or uh, Eric would come in and they can adjust the settings. They have the boost by gear, low boost, high boost mode, and stuff like that. All right, so this is the settings Michael told me to do. One PSI, solenoid activation, maximum boost at 100% duty cycle, normally closed, and fixed duty cycle, started at 5%. Go do a pool, data log it, uh, see what the boost level is at at 5%, write that down, and then keep going until we get to the desired boost level. Then at that point, he can go through and actually change all of these settings in here uh, for the percentage of duty cycle to PSI ratio. So let's say 5% duty cycle should be, you know, about five or six pounds of boost. Let's say that. Then we would be able to do five to six pounds of boost here, 10 pounds of boost here, and so on and so forth until we have a pretty good uh, map basically figured out for duty cycle versus PSI. But I'm going to go do a quick little run to see what 5% duty cycle does and uh, upload this into the ECU, data log it. We'll see what it's at from there and adjust from there. I hope you guys enjoy. All right, I'm going to go ahead and do a little test and we'll see what it's at. Okay, just got back from those data log runs, and as you can see, 14 PSI, air fuel ratio is 11.54. Engine coolant was pretty good at 182. Air intake temps, 90, which is really good. And uh, yeah, it's definitely doing what it's supposed to. And you can see here we have duty cycle for the boost controller is at 74%. So it had to go up quite a bit to reach that 14 PSI mark. 
but it's definitely there. So now we know in the parameters, 74% duty cycle is just peaking 14 pounds of boost. So about 76, 77, we should get closer to uh, 15 pounds of boost. So now that we have the data log graphs here and previous data logs from all the other uh, getting on it that I did, we know exactly where 14 pounds of boost is and we can go boost by gear and turn the boost down um, about 60 percent duty cycle 60 percent duty cycle was right around 10 pounds of boost and 74 is right at 14 so we can just mess with it a little bit and kind of guesstimate in between which is what like what psi is what we'd have to go through and actually do many different pools maybe on a dyno or something to figure all that out which I'm sure Eric can do no problem. So that way we can get more traction in first and second and then pull really hard in third, fourth, and fifth. Um, but it's definitely feeling amazing. This is the hardest it's pulled ever since I've had this car tonight. Um, right after the dyno, it just wanted to spin a lot, but tonight with the boost controller doing it the way it's doing it, it's building the boost in a very interesting way. It's putting a lot of power in um, midway through the gear, so it's a little bit harder to spin because it's not all at the beginning of the gear, if that makes sense. Uh, but either way, it's pulling incredible and I am super, super impressed with this setup. But yeah, there it is with the Mac valve installed. Everything's looking pretty good. And I hope this install video uh, clarified some things for you on how to set it up. There's plenty of information. I'll try to leave information in the description as well on how to set these uh, boost controllers up. But these Mac valves are pretty inexpensive and they work great. Really simple to set up, and as you can see, definitely pulls really good. Uh, I really wish the video could show you how good it really does pull, but this thing's just absolutely incredible, and there's much more to come. I did find out my ball joints are bad, so I was doing those pulls on very bad ball joints. Here's a picture or two of that, so you can see those ball joints are done for. So there will be no more getting on it videos until those are fixed because those are dangerous when they're like that. You could definitely have a problem tonight. I definitely risked that. So praise God that I'm safe and everything's good to go. Now we've got the data we need and we can just keep going from there. But I uh, really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button, drop a comment below and share the video around. It really helps the channel grow. And uh, stay tuned for more because we will definitely have more if God is willing. But that's it. I will see you in the next one. And as I like to say, God bless, stay safe, stay awesome.